request, huh? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. It's wonderful to be here with you today. We are now entering into a Sunday in Lent when we begin to have some great expectations for what lies ahead of us in worship and in our religious experience in the next and, and coming two weeks. Um, especially next Sunday is the Sunday of the Passion of Our Lord, which I always thought was an odd name for next Sunday. I always thought the Passion of Our Lord was Easter Sunday. Um, but however, that's the name we give Palm Sunday in the church. And it's a day when we celebrate the kingship of Christ once again, just as we did on Christ the King Sunday, as he enters into Jerusalem in a triumph and procession. And then the rest of that week, we are here uh, on Monday, Thursday, which is the Sunday of the, or the Thursday of the mandate to come together and celebrate the Holy Communion together. And then Good Friday, the day on which we remember the death of Christ and our role in that death, even today, in our sin and brokenness, even as we celebrate our saint saintliness in Christ. And then, of course, we come to Easter Sunday morning um, when we get together and really rejoice. Um, we are happy to be able to provide that experience not only for our members, but for the community at large as we come through the next several weeks. As we come through these lessons today, you ought to know on the Sunday before Palm Sunday, they, they would give in this lectionary my very favorite passage in Scripture. And that is Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. It makes us aware of what is going on for us in our lives. That we do not live alone. That we do not even proclaim the gospel on our own. But instead, the living word of God in Jesus Christ resides in, with, and around us. If it were not for that, we would find ourselves in a very difficult place often. But now we know that we can have confidence that Christ is always with us. Sometimes I suppose we wonder whether that's really true. But we, when we come to circumstances which seem beyond our control, circumstances which cause very difficult times in our lives, we discover all of a sudden that there is a resource of power and faith and trust in God that springs from us through the living presence of Jesus Christ. It is in that presence that that ongoing battle with the one who has not realized they have been defeated in the death of Christ and in the resurrection of Christ continues to try to reign in our lives in brokenness and sin. But that victory has already been won for you and me. That victory belongs to us. Paul tells us that nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not even our own sin and brokenness can separate us from that love. Because the Christ who God has sent lives in, with, and around us all of the time. You know, as you drive around this community, Judy tells me every Thursday when she comes in, she says, I think the traffic is getting worse. She struggles coming down the highway from the northwest side because of all the semi-trucks, and then she gets off on Speedway, which I, we're going to convince her there's a better street to take than going through the <laughs> university. But she says, it's always so busy and so difficult. And occasionally I will go out on the road, and I'm getting a little older, and I'll say, I don't remember it being this tough to drive through town. I don't remember this many cars. What is going on? Well, I could excuse Gem Show and Rodeo and, let's see, what else has been going on? Well, some basketball games here and there. Um, not enough, according to many of you, however. Um, <laughs> But now I'm out there driving this week, and school's out, and it's not supposed to be very busy, and I'm all of a sudden kind of overwhelmed. And I have watched in the last week in my driving through town occasions where three young men 
broke the law. And I'm wondering, what is going on? I have never run into that before. I watched three young men beat up another man in the middle of the intersection at Alvernon and Grant to get his cell phone. And I happened to be about a block and a half back, and thankfully he got away, and the police were already there, but they escaped through the neighborhood. My boys and I were going into Safeway, and we watched three young men and a young woman steal liquor, out of, they were underage, steal liquor out of the store and go plowing through the power doors and just throw them wide open as they fled the store to escape. This morning, the church's chicken on the corner by our house at Gulf Links and Colt was closed and taped off because the front door had been broken out of it. If you and I wonder if things are getting better in the world, I think they're probably not. I think there are a lot of people who have not heard about the possibility of having life transformed by having Christ in, with, and around them and receiving God's gift of faith. You know, sure, I get angry. This morning in choir practice for the kids, one of my boys said to me, You suck! <laughs> really? You have no TV! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's always so much fun to watch that dark brown skinned child just glow red. <laughs> but it tells it tells us, doesn't it, about our nature that we are simultaneously saints and sinners. We, my boys have all been baptized, all but one of them now comes up all the time to receive communion, and yet these things come out of them, out of me, out of their mother, out of our friends. When I ask somebody, do you ever say that to your kids? They go, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all have been there, haven't we? <coughs> There are a few really great parents who never uttered one of those words to their children. I would like to meet you. Thank you. Um, it's, it's pretty tough. Because our kids really can show the true nature of that brokenness in their lives. And it's our job, forgive us, Lord, to not respond in that way, but to raise up for them the fact of the one to whom they belong. And I'll do that today while he's not watching TV. <laughs> you know, we all have this going on inside of us. But we need to remember, as we come now to Holy Week, to Palm Sunday and, and Maundy Thursday and Good Friday, we need to remember why this all had to happen. We have the stories in Scripture. We have the proclamation of Christ at one moment and the condemnation of Christ at the next. Sometimes that's us. And that's why Christ, in his struggle to acknowledge that he needed to follow God's guidance, and yes, I think we can say that about Jesus. We heard his prayers. We heard that he asked God to relieve him from that burden. But in that struggle to meet God's request and guide for his lives, that map and journey God placed him on, Christ chooses something different. He doesn't choose the way the world would choose. Instead, he chooses the way that is meant for you and for me to help us understand how much God loves us in our lives. That's really crucial. You know, we all hit points in our lives where we wonder if God cares at all. I'm not even going to ask you to raise hands if you've ever had a day like that. Because I would bet everybody here has had a day like that. Or two or three or 20 or 30, yes. Or more. 
But the reality is this passage in Jeremiah tells us something very important. We are the people in whom Christ resides. That makes us very different. It makes us able to live some of the time like we are truly holy. Like we are the ones God has called. You know, we are the living body of Christ, the church. I have to tell you, we rarely run into a circumstance in the church where anybody has to be pulled back because they are not living like they are Christ. We don't run into that very often. It does happen once in a while. And it's a very, very sad time church. But by and large, you and I know what it means to have Christ in, with, and around us. We know what it means to live in that promise for the future that Jeremiah gets from God to give to the people of Judah. That they really, if they listen, if they hear what's coming in the future for them, far outstrips the problems they're having then if they will only return to God and restore the right worship and the care of widows, orphans, and resident aliens in their midst. And today, that community of people is still struggling to do that exact thing, just like us. You and I need Easter in our lives every single day. Every single day needs to be a day of Easter and a day of the resurrection. Because in that, we can remember that we are forgiven. That God isn't going to, oh, I am so thankful God isn't going to stand there in front of me and say, here's the list. You know, it's about a thousand pages long. Because when we are forgiven through our baptisms of Jesus Christ, through coming to receive this holy meal, what we discover instead is that God erases it. I want that to happen in all my relationships. I want people who I have done wrong to just, when I apologize, just erase it. It doesn't work that way, does it? doesn't work that way. It continues on. It continues on, and I get to suffer the consequences in this world for my idiocy. But I don't get to suffer them in the next life. Because God has made a promise through Jesus Christ for us. How do we get there? That's the other piece of this. How do we get there? Well, one of the things we do is we gather in church. We gather to undergird and nurture and support one another with God's gift of faith in our lives. That is crucial. When people don't make it to church, all of a sudden, this relationship with God through Jesus Christ begins to slip. You all know the story of what happens to that red-hot coal when you pull it out of the fire onto the hearth, right? It goes out. But it can be rekindled when it rejoins the fire. That's you and me. If we choose to be away, if something pulls us away, that, that faith, that gift of God that justifies us begins to slide and slip away. We need one another in the church. We need Robert. We need Ron and Becky. Oh boy, do we need Debbie. Um, <laughs> you know, um, we need one another in the church. I need Judy. She's the only competent pianist that plays in this place. <laughs> you know, we need each other because in each one of us, Christ resides. And every once in a while, we really need that residing Christ to come out of us to be in someone else's life too. And that's what we're really called to do in life.
I think you might be amazed if you joined the adult night out how some of those conversations go over a glass of wine and a nice meal. Or maybe two glasses of wine and a nice meal. Um, we really do begin to talk to one another about how we live, where we live, why we live, and what a difference it makes to us that we are together as people of Christ. Vanessa, how easy is it to talk to people at college about your faith? It's pretty hard, isn't it? You bet, just like it's hard for all of us out in the community in general. I'm the one who's privileged. I know when you come to talk to me, faith is going to be an issue. It's going to be the plus or the negative in life, somehow, for us. But when we're out in the world, it's so easy to find ourselves someplace we don't belong because somehow we're a little timid about this Christ who resides in us. You know, you can't give him away too much. You can't give Christ away too much. And that is crucial for who we are and how the world hears the good news of God's love by our giving Christ away. And God doesn't leave us, leave us with a void. He fills us with more. So that we might give that away too. That's what I want our children growing up in the church to learn. I want them to learn the power of having Christ in your life, causing you, Logan and Josiah and Jesse and James, and Levi, and wherever the girls ended up at, Aria and Ellie, I want you to know that Christ is in you. And like your parents, you will forget from time to time. Like all of us in the church, we will forget from time to time that Christ is in us. But the good news is that Christ doesn't stop being in us because we temporarily forget. In fact, Christ pursues us even harder by the power of Christ's spirit to bring us back, to restore us, to renew us, to help us understand again and again and again the power of God's grace meant for his children all over the world. Easter is soon upon us. The words... Christ is risen, he is risen again, are meant for every day in the lives of Christian people. Even the Sunday, two Sundays before Easter, those words are our words because the risen Christ is here and in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen.